The time is 2004. Facebook just became a thing. The Iraq war was in its first stage of filming because everyone filmed the war in Iraq for some reason. But one of the scariest things to happen in 2004 is something that will send shivers down the soul of any man. World of Warcraft. Now I don't know shit about WoW, but what I do know from a literal 5 second Google search was that WoW was the first ever live service video game. Where instead of a normal video game's life cycle where a game is released and that's that, no day one patches, no golden horse armor DLC, live service Service games sought out to give an enjoyable experience for years while getting consistent updates and new levels. Now I don't know exactly how WoW works, but what I do know is how live service games work and one of the many reasons for live service games is money. No surprise to pretty much everyone, a game that is steadily getting updates with microtransactions is going to make a hell of a lot more money than a game you spend $60 on and that's it. So other companies seen what Blizzard was doing and decided to copy their homework a little bit. For example, when the player count for Team Fortress 2 started going down, down, the developers Valve started their own version of a live service. In 2008, the Gold Rush update release, which added some things that were cosmetic and some things that weren't cosmetic. For example, some skins were purely cosmetic, but a new medic gun was released alongside the option to spend real money to get loot boxes. And those were just two examples. There's still damn near a countless amount of live service games. Destiny 2, Halo Infinite, and Fortnite, just to name a few. All done in their own slightly different ways. And live service games have gotten a lot more common and a lot more focused on making a game that's going to get your wallet out than a game that makes you actually want to play it and enjoy your experience. And when it comes to superhero games, live service is no soldier missing in action. It is more present in superhero games than it is in any other genre of gaming. Gotham Knights, Guardians of the Galaxy, that really weird Avengers game with the goofy ass Spider-Man swinging that I've seen literal mobile games have better swinging, and now we have a new soulless cash grab to throw onto that list. But this is a different story than all the other superhero live service games. This is a game that the developers purposely put in the universe in an insanely loved video game franchise just so people will buy it to see where the story goes for this universe and then slaps all the fans in the face at the same time while giving us a gameplay loop that is no different than all the other shitty live service games just with bigger guns and purple enemies. Today I'm talking or more like ranting about Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, a game that is just riding off the coattails of one of if not the best superhero games of all time. And no I'm not going to say that the Flash is too fast, me and this guy are not on the same team. But in all honesty, I've seen people use this as a reason for why people don't like the game, simply because an IGN review said so, and that is just complete bullshit. IGN hasn't been a trusted source for decades, they don't even play video games. They play the new game they're told to play and have to create a certain amount of pros and cons to come up with a score for the game and a certain amount of time before they get fired. Or their review is entirely bought and they're just reading off the pros and cons list that Naughty Dog wrote for The Last of Us 2 review. So basically, if you don't know, for whatever reason, the new Suicide Squad game will take place in the Arkham universe and will take place some time after the events of Arkham Knight when Batman's identity was revealed and he was forced to fake his death to keep he and his family safe as well as the city. And now years later we have Suicide Squad and in complete honesty I wouldn't even care that much because in my mind I could just be as spiteful as possible to the devs of this game. Just act like the game never happened and have my own perfect version of the Arkham timeline in my head where Tim Drake isn't bold. And if people seen this game for the soulless cash grab that it is I also really wouldn't care. But for some reason, everyone is getting hyped about this game just because it takes place in the Arkham universe. And I get it, a part of me was hyped too. I know I was super excited when I seen all those flash cutscenes, but the moment I seen gameplay and it looked like this, I knew I shouldn't have trusted a live service game no matter what universe it's trying to be a part of, even though nobody wants that. Yes, people want more from the Arkhamverse, but they want Batman, not the same ragtag group from the two shitty movies that some people actually like for whatever reason. So maybe some people did want a Suicide Squad game, but why does it have to take place in this universe. I know what you might be thinking, it has to be in the same universe because it's made by the same devs, but it's really not. The people who made your favorite Batman game don't work at Rocksteady anymore. The people who had a love for not only the character itself, but its comic version as well are not there anymore and are not present for this game's development. The guys who read A Serious House on Serious Earth and took heavy inspiration from it and used a lot of the same beats in Arkham Asylum are far long and gone from this shitty cash grab. And I know some people are going to be commenting saying wait until the game comes out, and that is quite literally what gets said for every game ever made in the history of mankind. It was said about Gotham Knights, it was said about Avengers, it was said about the new Assassin's Creed games, and it's still being said about this. I guarantee you that this live service game that is literally made to keep you playing for years will get boring after a month max, and at a minimum is probably only around 10 to 15 minutes of actual gameplay. 90% of the time playing this game is just going to be waiting to get another cutscene with a superhero because that's what people actually want to see. Not this 
annoying fuck who, yes, they finally gave him a boomerang, but it's not like that fixes anything. And not only do people want to see the superheroes more than the people they're playing as, but the gameplay is going to get so repetitive and sleep-inducing that it will genuinely become a form of visual NyQuil, and you'll only be able to actually enjoy the game when you're not even playing it and just watching a cutscene. And the leaks. Don't even get me started on the leaks. I get the literal name of the game is called Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, but who in their right mind would have thought that we would want the same Batman that we've come to know and love after the Arkham series to be brought back nearly a whole decade after just to get killed by Clown Girl? And yes, it is literally a game where you kill the Justice League, but nobody wants to kill the Justice League. We want to play as them. We want to see the league get formed, but the devs put a Batman model on top of high buildings because remember when you did that as Batman? So clearly game of the year potential that definitely didn't take 12 minutes of actual work, but who knows, I could be completely wrong when the game drops, and if it is, you have my word that I'll make a video saying I was wrong and a complete dumbass, but I have a high amount of confidence that I'm not that far off. But anyway, that's about it for this rant. I know it's a random ass video, but I just felt like I need to talk about this game and how people never seem to learn from other shitty live service games. But like I said, who knows, the game could have the possibility to come out and be completely different. Maybe they just lied and all their promotional material like Naughty Dog did for Last of Us 2 to make us think Joel was alive. Ah, uh, game development. Anyway, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, yeah. Bye!